Hello all, my name is Matt Dolan. I work in the product definition team here at Dassault Systems SolidWorks Corporation. Today we'll be taking a look at the new slicing command added in SolidWorks 2019. Slicing has numerous potential applications, so today we'll walk through how to use the new command and demonstrate one potential workflow. One of the most interesting workflows for slicing is in reverse engineering, in order to create standard SolidWorks BRAP geometry from a mesh BRAP body or a graphics body. Here we have an SDL file of a guitar neck. I created this SDL by scanning an actual guitar neck. I then opened the SDL file in SOLIDWORKS as a graphics body. As a graphics body, it's cool and I can move it around, but I can't do too much with it because it's a graphics body. SDL files are commonly used in 3D printing and 3D scanning, but when importing them as graphics bodies into SOLIDWORKS, you are limited in what you can do with them. At this point, we could either attempt to reverse engineer the part by attaching sketch points to the graphics body, and attempt to create standard SOLIDWORKS geometry from the sketch points, or we can convert it to a mesh BREP body and work with it as a mesh BREP using some of the tools added in SOLIDWORKS 2018, or we could use the new slicing command to generate sketches that intersect the model and use those sketches to create the standard SOLIDWORKS geometry. We're going to turn this part back into a standard SOLIDWORKS BREP body using the new slicing tool. Step one is to go to the menu bar, go to insert, and scroll down to slicing. When you click this, the slicing property manager is launched. First we're going to want to select our slicing plane. I've already created one using some sketch points. We may need to switch the normal direction of this plane to make sure that we're slicing in the correct direction. We can do that here. We then need to specify the number of planes we want to create. I'm going to create 30 planes and I'm going to offset them from each other by 30 millimeters each. This should give me a good spread of sketches throughout the model to capture the overall shape of the model. I can then go in later and add more planes using another slicing command to areas of interest, such as this transition in the neck here. Now you can see that this box has appeared around my model. This is the bounding box and it determines what part of the model gets sliced. For this example, I'm going to drag it until I'm sure that my entire model falls within the box. However, if you only wanted to slice a portion of your model, or only one body within your model, you could use this box to determine that. Now we'll take a look at some of the options we have. This first one here automatically adds the slicing planes and sketches to their own folder, which is really helpful for organization. The preview toggle lets you preview your slices. Note that for more complex geometry or a high number of slices, this can result in slower performance. Below that, we can see the different options for slices. The options we have here are Intersection, which creates a sketch detailing the intersection between the sketch and the plane. Circle, which creates a circular sketch based upon the average dimensions of the boundary of the body's intersection with the slicing plane. And Rectangle, which creates a rectangular sketch bounding the outer edges of the body's intersection with the slicing plane. Each of these slicing options has different uses. Here, we'll select the intersection option and deselect the exact option. For standard SOLIDWORKS geometry, there is no difference between exact and intersection. You get lines and arcs when these can be recognized, or you get a spline curve that accurately represents standard SOLIDWORKS geometry. This is the same as if you had used the intersect curve command. For mesh BREP and graphics bodies, because the underlying geometry is a mesh, there are a bunch of triangles joined together, exact produces a series of line segments, also called a polyline. This may or may not be desirable depending on your downstream application. For instance, if you tried to loft with the exact option, you would see the edges of the polyline in your loft. The intersect option fits a spline around the geometry using the intersections of the facet fins and the plane, essentially a point, as control points for the spline. This results in a smoother sketch. One important limitation of the intersect option arises when examining models with very small numbers of facets. Here we can see a cube created with standard SOLIDWORKS geometry that's been converted to a mesh BREP body. In this example, the entire cube can be represented with 12 facets. If we were to slice this cube using only the intersect option, 
we would wind up with spline curves that don't really have enough spline points to be accurate, as seen here. For low facet count objects like this, we would want to use the exact option. Now for our case, we'll be using only the intersect option, as our model has plenty of facets. In general, it is more appropriate to use the exact option to accurately generate a slicing sketch for low facet count models, and it is more appropriate to use the intersection option with exact unchecked to generate a slicing sketch for models with high facet counts. Now we'll get back to going through our original example. The only remaining option available to us are manual adjustments to the bounding box using input dimensions. We've already set up our bounding box, so we don't need to do that. It looks like we're good to go, so let's hit OK. Now the slices will generate. This can take some time depending on the complexity of the sketch. And boom, there they are. So now let's go ahead and hide the graphics body so we can get a clear view of the sketches. And we can now see the sketch slices generated right in front of us. Now we can clearly see the outline of the guitar neck, and we have these awesome little sketches defining exactly where the geometry of the neck is. Now from this, I can uh, loft through some of these, I can extrude them to form the square geometry at the head, I can go in and create more slices to capture that uh, interesting transition area we had looked at before. Um, there's a lot more that I can do with these than I could with the graphics body. I'm going to go ahead and work with these and try and recreate the part as best I can. I'll skip ahead so that you guys can see the final result. And there we go. You can see that we have now constructed standard SOLIDWORKS geometry by creating slices through the tessellated mesh model that we imported as a graphics body. I can use all my standard tools with this. I could create an assembly and made it to the guitar body, for instance. Um, pretty much anything. Uh, this is only one of the numerous workflows enabled with the new slicing tool. We look forward to receiving feedback on it. and. Thank you so much again for participating in the SOLIDWORKS 2019 beta.